because they're the kind of organization over here, they're a type one organization, and a type one organization is unfailingly polite. So it's polite, and that's completely different to a type two organization over here. It's a type two organization, and here, what's the real difference? They get stuff done. And those are the broad types of organizations. This one in which nobody really says what's wrong. And if they're told once to shut up, they kind of shut up. It doesn't even take that much, in my experience, to get somebody to sort of stop criticizing or to not suggest a great idea or an absurd idea. Here we have the company split between commitment to strategy and purpose and commitment to structure and rules. If you really believe in the company, you love where it's going, and you also are totally happy to keep all the rules the way they've been set up, follow the structure religiously, then you're a soldier. You're a good guy or girl, and that's fantastic. We need soldiers. If, on the other hand, you're not committed to the rules and you don't care whether the company succeeds, you're a rebel. And if you really want the company to succeed, you love its mission, but you're not sure that the rules really are helping, you're a bit of a maverick. Now, which of these groups do you think is most dangerous to a company at crisis point? Crisis meaning a decision point. They don't do anything that's useful, but they pretend they are. And those people right now are learning the language of change, um, and they're doing very well, and they'll be able to recite them, and you won't be able to tell at first who is who. Soldiers get to start acting like mavericks, and there's a very easy way of doing this. You just tell the soldiers that the new rule is to be entrepreneurial and break the rules. And then they are very obedient, and they get on with breaking the rules. You know, one rule a day. I will break <laughs> religiously. Some companies are like this. This is how far I can get to your business, about here or maybe outside the door. But you know, nowadays, we're a bit more collaborative, so I get this close. But probably, in order to collaborate, you need to be this much into people's space. You actually have to be on their toes. And that is a cultural change. It's certainly a behavioral change to say, look, welcome to my space. You know, it's a bit uncomfortable. <laughs> Definitely, of course, brush your teeth and have showers, you know, in a corporate sense, but you need to be this close. The power to win essentially comes from connecting people inside and outside the organization with imagination and a certain amount of uh, sort of cheeky entrepreneurial boldness. Thank you very much for your time this morning. And it was this pattern that Harvard Business School professor Clayton Christensen called disruptive innovation. And I believe that if we apply these ideas to healthcare, we can also figure out how to make healthcare affordable too. Now, what is disruptive innovation? Well, in a nutshell, it's taking an industry that has traditionally relied on costly expertise and then gradually replacing that expertise with a simplifying technology so you don't need the experts anymore. Put a different way, it's using technology to enable people to do more for themselves, things that they used to have to pay others to do for them. So that's disruptive innovation. It, it basically makes products and services more affordable to more people who previously couldn't buy those products or services because they were too expensive or too complex. And yet, if it's such a powerful force in all these other service industries, why haven't we seen more of it in healthcare? And that, to answer that question, it really requires us to understand what's wrong with healthcare in the first place. Now, I'm here to talk about what I think is the root cause of the problems of healthcare, about why it is that disruptive innovation hasn't happened to a larger degree in healthcare, and why it is that technologies in other industries seem to make things more affordable, yet in healthcare, things only seem to get more expensive.